Hey everyone, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about the joy of stitching. I do design patterns under the name Lindy Stitches. You can find my work at lindystitches.com. But this video is just all about stitch sania. And so let me tell you what I accomplished in the month of May. So excited. So every Saturday I'm going to show up to tell you what happened during the week. Today is March 9th. And so far, my Stitch Sania is a 10 out of 10. I was able to finish up my Chatelaine beading within two and a half days. And I just let myself go on my new start for the rest of the week. I had an amazing time and it was much needed because I had a stressful week. So the joy of stitching was so pleasant. So let me show you my Chatelaine first. Here it is. Here's a nice close up of my Chatelaine. I've been unable to do this for you for a while, but here's my Stitch Sania main piece. Uh, I have one, two, three, four sections planned for May. Uh, the rest of it is fully beaded, but this last week I managed to complete this corner and that includes this garland here and there is a row of beads here and then this garland has beads in it as well. This corner, as far as the stitching goes, was the most annoying mushroom corner because that was pure pink, <laughs> pink confetti. And I didn't enjoy stitching this, but as I was beating it, I think this is my favorite corner. It's just so pretty. Uh, Martina was a master of details and I think it looks wonderful. I cannot wait until this whole thing is beaded. Oh, I also worked on this corner piece because I finished it really quickly. I think I'm getting faster at beading. Uh, either that or wanting to do a new start was really driving me forward because I went I felt like this corner went really quickly I finished it up in I think two days and thought well I'm just gonna go ahead and do this this piece that has three rows of beads um, there's a silver row and then a green row yeah, anyway, has a lot of beads, and I also did the beads in this um, scroll work. I was actually watching someone else's finishing video of this piece and realized I had <laughs> missed a few of these cr bigger crystals, and so I had to go back and put those in. I had missed this one. It's, it's easy to miss the little numbers. Obviously, when you're on a row, you're seeing all of it, but there's a tiny little number in there that I had missed. So I, I went back and added some crystals that were not on my piece that the video helped me to see. So there's my Chatelaine. I could not wait to get to this new start. This is the project that I am most anticipating and I'm going to have a very hard time separating myself from it to start stitching on my Chatelaine again tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to leaving Huckleberry Farm. I am in love with what is going on at Huckleberry Farm. It took me a while to settle into this new start. It usually takes me a while to settle into new starts. I don't know why, and I think that's why it does stress me out to start new projects. This one especially because I chose a fabric that is very different from the genius of Janine McGowan. This is shale. I picked a dark fabric, Haunted by Picture This Plus. I'm doing a 36 count, two over two. 
This was a gift from my friend Carrie. Thank you so much, Carrie. I love this fabric. I love, love this fabric. So let me get a piece of paper. And I cannot get over how good this is looking. I can't get over it. Now, these colors, I did have to tweak a tiny bit, um, but not much. So this is still 100% the genius of Janine. Boom. How good does that look? I did have to lighten up my leaves a little bit to get them to show up on my darker fabric. But other than that, this is all her color palette. I, I, <laughs> I'll just growl. I will just growl about this piece. Look at the bear's little tiny feet. Oh my goodness. It's, I love, I love how this is turning out. I, I love when you take a risk and it pays off. I feel like this is paying off. This is so pretty. I think as I go on, I am going to have to change some colors. Uh, for example, the yellow of the house looks really, really shocking on my fabric. And so I don't know that I'm going to end up with a yellow house. I might do like a light gray house or something a little bit more neutral. I might not. I thought about putting my kids' names in place of the alphabet because I have three of them. And their names would kind of fit there. I don't know that I want to do that. Uh, I'm not sure. But I might not be coming back to Huckleberry Farm for a while. Which is sad. But Stitch Mania rolls on. I am... I could go to bed with this. I mean, sleep with it and hug it. Oh. So happy that my library got their act together and they're doing curbside pickup. Now you can only pick up 10 things at a time. I got, I filled my cart. I might go back in a couple days. I got books. I've been listening to some booktube and so my to read list has just been getting longer and longer and because I can't get to the library, I've just been stuck with what I have been reading, which is kind of a dry read. I am getting myself through a biography of Renoir, and I love Renoir. I love him as a person. I love his personality. I like reading about his life, but the biography I am reading is written by his son, and it is not easy to read. It is boring and rambly, but I'm getting through it. I'm getting it through it for those golden moments where I... I feel like I am accomplishing my goal of getting to know one of my favorite artists. But anyway, I'm going to show you my library haul. I got my next Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye. This is a much recommended book off booktube. This is Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is a young adult novel about grief, but it is written very creatively looking forward to getting that one and stay with me by watch as I butcher this name Ayobami Adebayo and then two books of poetry by Billy Collins because I need some Billy Collins right now I got horoscopes for the dead and the rain in Portugal if you're looking for a poetry book that's only one author. It's not a collaboration. I highly recommend Sailing Around the Room by Billy Collins. Billy Collins is so accessible. I love his poetry. I'm looking forward to diving into these. And so another week ahead of me, I'm going to be doing more reading starting tomorrow to my passenger live stream on Sunday afternoons. And then what shall I start next? I don't know. 
I'm really tempted to just go down back to Huckleberry Farm with the bears and Janine. I feel like I'm spending time with Janine as I stitch this. Is that strange? See you next week. Hey everybody, it's the end of week two of Stitch Sadia, and you know I hit my goal. Here is the clip showing my chatelaine. So here's my week two Stitch Sadia progress. This week I managed to bead this whole tree section, so that includes uh, this long garland that goes all the way around the piece, and a bunch of crystals. And there's also beads in these two branches of that garland. And truth be told, this actually didn't take me that long. So I had the rest of the week to play with my new start. But I think it's looking absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors in this piece. So coming up, I have this corner and then I have to do the big middle section and I will be done with this. I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I cannot wait to see this whole piece finished. So the beading on this project is taking a significantly less amount of time than I thought it would. I kind of feel guilty that I picked such an easy stitch sania piece. However, life has been a little bit crazy to make up the difference, and so I don't feel all that guilty. I've had plenty of time to finish my beading earlier in the week, and then if I need to overthink my next start, I have time, <laughs> and then I can get started. So I actually finished this week's beading in one long afternoon. I know. It didn't take that much responsibility, but I still rewarded myself with a new start. Oh yes, I did. So I did hit a speed bump that took up some of my mental energy and kind of frustrated me, which was unfortunate. I really was looking forward to starting Dames Boarding School by Exemplar Dames. I had the perfect piece of fabric all picked out and ready to go. Went to measure where to put my first stitch and my fabric was not big enough. You know how every now and then you get a piece that's an inch bigger? Yay! Or an inch smaller ooh, than it's supposed to be? That's what happened. My piece was supposed to be, I think, 10 inches wide. It totally wasn't. It was 9. And I technically could have fit it on there, but I think I would have had quarter inch, not quarter, like three quarters of an inch on each side, which I am not comfortable with. Too much stress. And you know how when you have the perfect thing picked out and you have it all planned out in your mind and then you have to change course, it's just sometimes difficult. I pulled out all my fabric, tried to convince myself that one of them would work, and then finally gave up because I really love this and I want it to turn out really well. I don't want to take any risks with it. And so I tabled Dame's Boarding School with great heartache. I am exaggerating. I was slightly disappointed and then I went scrounging through my stash to find out what I would start this week. And I was raised by a man who when you went out to eat with him, the waitress would have to come back three times for him to make up his mind. I love you dad and I am exactly like you. Dad would sit and contemplate the chicken or the fish. The chicken or the, should I get the chicken or should I get the fish? He would ask everyone else what they were ordering. We would wait and wait and the waitress would come and dad would order the steak. I have carried on this great annoying tradition with my own family when I go out to eat. My husband now refuses to tell me what he's ordering. And that only makes it worse because I need all the info. So I didn't pick anything that I even showed you in my Stitch Sania brainstorming video. I don't know why. Just stitching along Gertrude's garden, just sang my song, and I hearkened to her call 
and gave her a start. I love this sampler. I love how funky it is. This will be my first reproduction sampler that I've ever stitched. I have a collection, a little collection of them that I have amassed. I have never actually stitched one. I don't, I don't know why. Just haven't until Gertrude showed up. I got this at Nashville this year. It was not a new release from Just Stitching Along. It's, it came out in 2018. But Gertrude deserves more attention, don't you think? Because she's lovely. Look at her hair. And look at her husband's leg problems. I love this sampler. Now, I do love yellow and orange accents on my walls. I do decorate with yellow and orange, you know, stuff with yellow and orange goes great with my blue bases and my green bases that I use around the house. But I do not enjoy stitching with especially yellow. I don't know why this is perfectly wonderful and funky, but I decided to just totally change the colors. So I went with a Weeks Dye Works 36 count tin roof. The old Weeks, not the new Weeks. I love the old Weeks. I think it's so funny how we all start repeating each other. I do it too. I know I do. Everyone feels like they need to say how they don't like the old Weeks. But I feel like I need to say, I love the old weeks. I think it's great. And I stitch with two strands. And I love stitching with two strands. Here is Gertrude. Lindy stitches colors. So I picked mostly gentle arts there's some weeks in there these two greens are weeks hey mary mary stitchers can you guess what color this is sea foam those of you who are slogging through the skirt probably hate sea foam by now but i'm still using it <laughs> uh this is gentle arts maple syrup this dark brown I die. So a lot of you want a video from me about how I choose colors and I've been thinking about it and what I could say. I'm not going to go into it right now. The shortened version is I lay floss that I like on fabric and I see what looks good which totally isn't helpful at all which is why I'm not explaining right now but I also like to throw in colors that seem a little bit weird like this is color and cotton fairy ring and that is a fall floss so we have spring lusciousness this also is a strange choice this is mustard seed by gentle art I like to throw a few weird colors in because I think it makes it funky and fun. So this is the fairy ring right here. You can see it's a mossy green and a gold. I just love it. Does it traditionally go with light pink? No, it does not. Those colors don't really go together, but they do. I love how Gertrude is looking. I just decided to fly with the seat of my pant by the seat of my pants and with the seat of my pants. On this last section, there's just a bunch of initials, so I put our last name, my husband's initials, my initials. I was going to put my kids' initials, but ran out of room, so I just put the name of my cat, Walt. That works. The kids' initials will be down here somewhere. I love Gertrude. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? She's wonderful. I'm totally digging her. 
This week I finished up two books. Don't be impressed. They're both very small and short reads. I finished up Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Mar Max Porter. I would like to say that this is not a young adult novel. I said that last week. It's totally not. I was wrong about that. This is an adult novel. It deals with grief. This is about a husband with two small boys who has lost his wife. I have never lost someone that close to me, but I was astounded at how skillful Max Porter is at describing what grief feels like. That part of the book, I was amazed. The part of the book that kind of threw me for a loop was the giant crow showing up to help this family through their grief. I didn't understand the role of the crow and why, he, what exactly he was doing to help or if he was even helping. Like I didn't get it. <laughs> Do you ever read a book and you're like, I don't think I really understand what the author was doing. That's how I feel about this book. I need to go online and listen to some comment, read some commentary from people who understood what was going on. Because I wasn't in that group. I also read Billy Collins' Horoscope for the Dead. Horoscopes for the Dead. This is a poetry collection. I needed this this week. This week was mentally and emotionally taxing and I find poetry very therapeutic. I find Billy Collins very therapeutic. This is a great read. I don't think it's my favorite poetry collection of his, but it had a slam banger poem in there that I can't wait to read to you some other day. Not today. Next week, I think I'm going to start something that I don't change the colors of because the changing the colors is wearing my brain out and I can't handle it. I just can't do it anymore. When I change all of the colors, it, I don't want to say it's like an anxiety thing, but it's like I'm over, I am constantly overthinking and overanalyzing until I get to the point where I'm like, yes, <laughs> this does look good. Yes, I haven't totally screwed it up. Now I can relax. That's the end of this week's update. See you next week. Hi everyone, it's May 30th. And as excited and satisfying as parts of Stitch Sania have been, I really contemplated just not finishing this whole vlog. Um, because I didn't know if I could bring myself to make a video. I'm just gonna say, like, two minutes of, um, thoughts, and then I'm going to get strictly to the subject of Stitch Mania. And I am not gonna go deep into politics or anything like that. I understand that watching videos about needlework is a stress relief and it's a happy place and I'd like to keep it that way but I also feel like I can't be my normal happy self um, my heart feels like it's in my stomach <clears throat> and I just have a major spirit of heaviness and I've done nothing but think and process and weep and um, it's hard to car compartmentalize that away from I don't want to cart men <laughs> I can't talk. I don't want to compartmentalize it. Um, I don't want to push the uncomfortable 
things away. Uh, but like I said, this is a video about Stitch Sania. And um, so yeah. Let's talk about um, needlework. And forgive me, just forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Um, and yet, don't, I, I don't need forgiveness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's get started. Uh, my last two weeks of mania went, went um, pretty well. I did complete four new starts, and I did make my goal. Uh, the reason I didn't make a third video for the third week was that it all just blended together. I started beating my last corner of the Chatelaine before the big center, and it went so quickly that I looked at the center and I thought, well, there's so many beads in that section. I might as get, well get a little bit started before I set this aside. So I did one color, then I did another color, and I could not stop. So I actually finished my Chatelaine in week three because it was so exciting and I just didn't want to stop. There was, it was thrilling to finish. And so I'll show you that, my close up right here. Hey everyone, we are in my dining room and this is what I typically do with my cross stitch finishes right after I finish them. <laughs> I tuck them around an existing piece of art. This is the first piece of art I ever bought and paid serious money for, $50, which when I was first married was serious money. This is a picture of Grace Darling and you can look up her story on the internet. But I love this piece. This is beside the point. Uh, here is my mushroom and fern chatelaine. I started this in 2017 in the summer, and so this was roughly three years of on and off work. Definitely did not keep working on it day after day for three years. Uh, I love it. And I am going to be preparing a sh my Chatelaine experience video because I have a lot of things to say about it. Uh, I don't even really know what to say at this point. It's gorgeous. I love it. So... All the beading is done. And um, it's gorgeous. It's very, very sparkly. Of course, I, I can't pick up all that with my phone right here now. I absolutely love the laciness of the middle section. The middle section really, really takes the cake, I think. Uh, it's just show-stopping. Uh, these corners were... I'm just going to be honest and say a lot of this was not particularly enjoyable to stitch. For me, it was more about the finished product because it's stunning. Um, I am not a blingy, blingy, sparkly stitcher, but I just... I love this piece because it looks like a serious tribute to the beauty of walking in the woods and making discoveries out in the world. Um, sorry, I got interrupted. Um, one last little tool around and I will give you more info and maybe a little bit more detail about my experience, more close-ups in a forthcoming Chatelaine video. So here she is. 
you can see how big it is. <laughs> it's as big as half my body. And I just adore it. I just adore it. My ultimate plans are to take this to the House of Stitches in Laporte, Indiana and get a frame and I'm so sad to put glass on it, but this is so big and I can't think of a single safe spot I could put this in my house where I felt like it would be safe from passers-by, animals, children, and I don't want to worry about it. So I will be putting it under glass, but before then I'd like to like do some photography and I am going to do that Chatelaine experience video because I have things to say. And if you're interested, oh, you're getting the sparkle. At least I can see it in the camera. If you are interested in doing a Chatelaine, I think I could share some useful things that I have learned. Um, I was not an experienced stitcher when I started this. I had hardly done any specialty stitches in my life and this is fraught with them. Uh, it was really a unique experience and I have thoughts as I've already mentioned. So I can't stop showing it. It's a labor of three years of love and it's so beautiful. So technically you could hang it this way because you can see the top and bottom rows line up directionally or you could hang it this way. And I'm gonna, this is technically the top and I, I am gonna hang it this way only because I really, this is my favorite corner. <laughs> Even though it was the biggest pain to do. So thanks for your encouragement all throughout this process. This has been a super pro popular project and other stitchers have been inspired to start it. <laughs> I just love it. I just love it. So let's talk about other new starts that I made. I did make a total of four for the four weeks that I was honoring my schedule. And here's what I started to notice. In my planning video, I told you that as far as my array of projects were concerned, I really needed to start some things with confetti to give myself that variety. Here was the problem. Uh, after starting two projects, Huckleberry Farm and Gertrude's Garden, where I was changing the color, changing some colors in Huckleberry Farm, all the colors in Gertrude's Garden, I had new start fatigue. Uh, <laughs> On top of doing those new starts, I'm also designing and exercising my creative color muscles in that way. And I kind of was brain dead as far as starting things. I needed just something, things that were easy, things that I could crank out. And so, yes. Let's talk about what I did. I decided to start Guinea Fowl by Ardith Designs. Amanda May is one of the sweetest and most generous people I know on FlossTube. I really, she is my ex-school friend. Pause please. I have a file in my filing cabinet called The Best Things and that's where these pictures were. Here's Amanda May. She's my ex-school friend. And I love her. Anyway, Amanda May said she was inspired by my Stitch Me Stitch Sania planning video where I showed all the funky birds that I wanted to start. She had to chart a guinea fowl. <laughs> she shared the pattern with me and I wanted to start it. This is adorable and quirky and I love it. I started it and I finished it because this was over Memorial Day weekend and I 
I got to sit on the porch with my dad and watch the birds and I just had a lot of downtime. Also have a 15 year old daughter who's getting her driving hours in and I got to sit in the back of the van and just stitch. So here is guinea fowl. <laughs> I used my own, I just picked colors that looked like the picture, and I think it turned out marvelously. They are wonderfully quirky. I didn't do the green circles that are over here in the corner, and I also did their eyes a little different. They call for French knots in the middle of their eyes, and it really just looked like this bird had a drug problem. So. I just did full cross stitches for their pupils and made them looking in different directions. I think this is adorable. Super quick, really fun stitch. Amanda May's patterns are really nice if you haven't tried them. I think you should go check her website out because they're really nice. She gives you this, these uh, needle minder printables. How cool is that? I never even thought of doing that. But they're really lovely PDFs. So thanks Amanda May. Loved it. I'm not sure how I was, how I'm going to finish this, but I had this piece out. <laughs> oh man. I might look for like a littler gothic black frame for this piece because I just think it's funny. This is what it's, it was sitting on. The last thing I started, and I kind of knew this was going to happen, I knew Lindy Stitches was going to horn in, and my business did. Um, and I couldn't help it. <laughs> All my model stitchers, which I have five, I have five model stitchers that are regularly stitching for me, and they're all, they all either just finished a project or they're currently stitching something. I think three of them, yeah, three of them are currently stitching something. The other two just finished. And I have this piece that I designed for fall and I just felt like, come on, Steph. <laughs> this is cute and sweet. Cute and sweet. This is a great stitch, and so I, I want to do it myself. This piece of linen has been stuck in the mail for almost two months, but it finally showed up on my doorstep. I have noticed that if you are missing orders, if the post office is MIA on one of your projects, I really believe it will eventually show up. Please be patient with people that you've ordered from. Uh, I've sent out replacement pro packages to a few of my customers, and I'm happy to do that. I really don't think that you should have to wait a month for your order. Um, they've all show eventually shown up. So I, just a little mail encouragement. If your mail is on hold or you're fearing it's lost, I really don't think that it is. All that to say, my camera is over enhancing this color. It is 32 count Sweet Pea Belfast Linen by Zweigert. It is lovely, lovely to stitch on. And here was my fourth new start. This is going to be a fall Lindy Stitches release inspired by Macbeth. And I can't wait to show it to you because it's, it's awesome. It's truly awesome. It is going to be monochromatic and I'm just stitching it with DMC 310. <sighs> and I can't wait. Uh, my sophomore daughter was studying Macbeth and we decided to watch a version of it together. and. You know, Shakespeare is ripe with goodness, ripe with awesome words, and I was inspired the next day. I charted this up, and I... Um... 
So that wraps up my Stitch Sania report. Four new starts. It went in ways that were unexpected and I'm happy with all of the projects that I started and <laughs> I do feel like I need to lay out all my current projects and really like Okay, how am I going to handle this? Because things just shot up. Thankfully, my guinea fowl is finished, and so really only three joined the rotation. Gertrude's garden. And Huckleberry Farm. This is more... This is the reward of Stitchania for my personality type, where you don't enjoy starting things, because coming back to this almost makes June more enjoyable to me than May. <laughs> because I've established my colors, there's no thinking, it's beautiful, it's in the right space on the fabric, and now I can just run with it. Oh, look at that, it's, it's wonderful. So that's my Stitch Sania report. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about books or anything else because I just can't right now. Um, thank you for being my community <laughs> and my friends and um, supporting me. Um, I love Stitchers and I love Floss Tube. So thank you, and um, I hope to see you on Instagram. I hope to see you in my Lindy Stitchers Facebook group. If you're interested in my forthcoming patterns, which I didn't talk about, but you're you're going to be interested. They're marvelous. Like everyone, I am dealing with supply issues, mail issues, as I already mentioned. Um, Sometimes it feels like you're trying to get the stars to align. Uh, it's not that difficult. A little bit of an exaggeration, but I have two, possibly four, awesome things coming for summer. You can sign up for my newsletter down below. I release freebies and coupons and all that sort of stuff. So do with it what you may. I... I wish I could give you a hug, but I can't. So, um, virtual hugs to you, and um, I will catch you next time. Bye, friends. <laughs>